Welcome back. Good morning, San Diego. Time now is 638. After witnessing the impacts of retail theft in his city, Vista Mayor John Franklin decided, hey, we're going to do something about this. He created a retail theft enforcement task force in Vista, which has currently led to seven arrests, including five individuals involved in a criminal conspiracy. He joins us now to discuss this success and more. Mayor Franklin, good morning to you, sir. Paul, thanks for having me. All right. So there's two elements to this. There's the guys that are guys and gals that are you know doing committing the crime in the store but then there's a whole nother world of of criminal behind that yes can you, can you explain that please well and that's uh, really what i wanted to talk to you about is uh, i wanted to commend our sheriff's department and deputies that are involved in this operation last week they executed a search warrant on a home in san marcos and they recovered more than two hundred thousand dollars of stolen merchandise that was uh, as a consequence of their investigations that have developed because of this retail task, uh, task force that we set up in Vista. And where was that merchandise going to be resold? How, how does that work? You know, they're reselling it primarily online. And there's all kinds of ways. I mean, a lot of this merchandise you don't realize gets moved on Amazon and on eBay. And uh, unfortunately, we as consumers are often unwittingly purchasing stolen merchandise and we don't even know it. Yeah, so there, there's a third leg to this then, to the stool, because how do you prevent stolen merchandise from being sold online? What, what's going to be that mechanism? Well, you know, I've actually been talking to federal policymakers to make sure that we're doing more. We need our big online retail outlets to be policing that because uh, they have an idea, you know, people that are selling 30 bottles of antacid medicine you know, uh, probably don't have a, a vendor relationship with Johnson & Johnson or the manufacturer, <laughs> so they probably have enough information to know. But what's really important is that in Vista, we've said we're not going to tolerate the shoplifting anymore. We're going to go after the people. And, and what we've realized is there are people that are driving more than 100 miles to come to our stores and loot the stores in our community. And this is really, this is the most significant part of this. This is organized crime. I don't know if you put on screen the bottles of Dom Perignon and other, uh, you know, hundred dollar bottles of wine. These are not people that are stealing because they have some kind of need of necessity. These are people who are stealing yeah. to enrich themselves yeah. and they're doing it in large quantities. They're doing it in organized rings of thieves and they're making lots and lots of money. Yeah, the, the argument, oh, if they're just trying to put food on the table and bread on the table for their, for their kids, that doesn't wash. That, that's not no, what's going on. It's not. And, and that's, but. I think I just to go back to this if if you're buying something that's super cheap online you're part of the problem yeah if if, if you're not no that's you're, right you you're, 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 you're committing theft too in, in a way I mean right. you're not actually doing it but if you if the deal is too good to be true then right. you're, you're part of the issue but when you're shopping for something on Amazon or eBay and the price is just slightly cheaper so you're you don't realize you just think you're getting right you know, the best price yeah. you may not realize yeah. that you're so I I think the vast majority of these goods are being uh, moved through online outlets and other outlets where consumers don't have any idea that they're buying stolen Fair goods enough. maybe in some instances they do yeah if the, if the deal's too sweet then right. you know but all right but then let's go back to like just the physical act of seeing stuff stolen in a store and people you know the employees have put, putting their hands up is that ever going to change you think back in the day back in the old west no one did that because there was a sawed off shotgun behind the bar counter and no one no one stole anything well you know uh when i was a kid and all my life we had uh sensormatic theft uh, detectors and if somebody tried to walk out of the store without paying yeah. somebody would at least approach them and say hey you got to pay for that stuff uh we have to turn the political will we have to elect leaders who are willing to enforce our laws. We've got the Fix 47 ballot initiative. I'm working with our DA, Summer Steffen, to get that qualified, put that on the November ballot. That will uh, make a felony crime again out of some repetitive shoplifting crimes. We need to demonstrate the political will of the people of our city, our county, and our state that we're not going to put up with retail theft anymore because the average uh, cost now for every family in California is about $600. So this is a real impact to our families. You know, if you went around and collected that money from everybody, then they would, it would be eye opening. And then they, that's right. Then this would, this problem would already be solved. Maybe if we made stores, maybe if we forced them to itemize on the receipt the amount of tax that they're charging you to pay for the stolen goods, maybe then people would start to get angry about it. Well, I hope your success spurs other mayors and other municipalities to, uh, to do something about it too, as well. You know. Thanks, Paul. All right, uh, con uh, congratulations, sir.